All right, welcome back, everybody. Here's where we left off in the last episode. So we created this awkward looking connection string, and then we passed it to a new PDO instance. And then we prepared and executed our first query. We fetched all of the results as an associative array. And then we looped over the posts, and for each one, we displayed the title of the post within a list item. And here's what we get. Okay, so to be honest, there is so much we have to cover. We need to talk about prepared statements and SQL injection and, and different ways that we can configure the DSN. But before we get there, let's just take a few moments and refactor this into something that's a little more uh, friendly to use. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. If I were to, at the top, make a little note about what we're trying to do here, I could do that with two forward slashes. And now I can enter any text and this won't be interpreted as PHP. It's just a comment. Anyways, if I were to write this out, I sort of want to connect to the database and execute a query. Okay, so why don't we convert this to a class? And we already learned a little bit about classes in the last episode, but we'll learn a little more in this video. We learned that we can create a class like so. And I did say connect to the database. And at least initially, it's helpful to follow the nouns. So why don't we start with that, class database. All right, next up we have and execute a query. Yeah, in this example, uh, execute and query would both be pretty good method names because they can both be treated as verbs. And remember, we learned that methods are the verbs of the programming world. So in this case, let's just pick one. Do we want to call execute or query? And this is where the design aspect comes into play. If I'm working with a database class and I want to trigger a SQL query, do I want to call execute or do I want to call query? Hmm. In this case, I think I'll go with query, public function query. And yeah, remember, whenever we define a function within a class, technically we would call it a method. And don't forget to add the visibility. But yeah, right now we're making everything public because we haven't yet dug into that. All right, so this is looking pretty good to start. The next step is to create a new instance of the database class. So I will begin by creating a variable, db is very common, equals a new instance of the database class. Okay, so now I can call this query method by saying db arrow query. And yeah, you'll know you did it right because if you're using a good IDE, it will give you some IntelliSense. And you can see, yep, you can call this method. Okay, so now how would we go about refactoring all of this into our new database class. And you know what? We're gonna do it one refactor at a time. So we will begin by selecting everything, cutting it, and pasting it into our query method. Okay, so now when I call this query method, yeah, it builds up the DSN, it initializes PDO, it prepares a hard-coded query, which doesn't really make sense. What if I wanna run a different query? Well, we'll get there. Then we execute it, and then we fetch the results, and we save it to a variable called posts. But yeah, if we wanted, we could return that. And now we should have an array of posts if we did everything correctly. So let's try this out. Posts equals db query. Come back to Firefox, give it a refresh, and yeah, it still works. So it's not very flexible, because right now I have a database class with a query method, and all that query method does is it selects everything from the post table, which of course you don't want. So yeah, that would be the next step. Let's make this query dynamic by turning it into a variable. And we can accept that when we call the method. Okay, so now if I scroll down, you'll see squigglies here because we are requiring that you pass us a query. So I will paste that in now. And yeah, notice I've moved it out of the method and made it just a little more flexible. So notice I can tweak this if I need to. For example, select star from post where ID is greater than one. And in this case, I think I only have one record. So if I come back, yeah, notice I have complete control. If I had a different table, well, I could say select star from users. Uh, again, I've made it uh, that much more dynamic. But now if we scroll up, it works, but it's a little unfortunate because as you can imagine in a real life application, you could potentially execute hundreds of queries as the user browses around your site. And it's a shame that every time you call this query method, we basically start over from scratch. It doesn't really make sense. Instead, it would be nice if I could build up our PDO instance one time, and then every time we call query, we, we effectively reuse that same instance. And as it turns out, of course, we can do that. 
Okay, so where would that code go? And as it turns out, when we initialize a new instance of a class, there's a way to say, okay, right when that instance is created, I want you to do something. And here's how we do that on PHP. We create a function and it's very awkwardly named. It's underscore underscore construct. So when uh, an instance is constructed, that's how I think of it. But yeah, remember two underscores and then construct. So yeah, if I wanted to, I could say, hi there, uh, just to prove to you that we are triggering this method automatically. So if I come back to Firefox and give it a refresh, sure enough, that function or that method has been called by PHP automatically. Okay, so it sounds like that's the perfect place to initialize our PDO instance. So I will grab this and move it up here. Okay, but now notice in our query method, we have an issue. We expected to have access to that PDO variable, but it's in a different scope now. We moved it out of this method. Okay, so here's what we can do. Right up in the construct, let's define a instance property. And again, right now we're making everything public, but later I'll teach you when it would make sense to not make things public. All right, and what should we call this? Well, we could do PDO like we have here, but really it's sort of our database connection. That's how I think of it. So why don't we call it connection? Okay, so now I have an instance property on our class called connection. Now I wanna to write to it. So instead of creating this variable PDO, I will instead say dollar sign this for this instance, arrow connection equals new PDO. And then stylistically, I would probably put a blank line above it. Okay, so now think about it. Whenever I create a new instance of database, well, we automatically call this construct method as we learned. Within it, we initialize a new PDO instance and we assign it to this connection instance property. And yeah, by the way, that's generally the term we use, property. Okay, and what's cool about that is anywhere else in this class, I can access that property. So now if I wanna use my connection, I can replace this with this connection. And on the connection, we will call prepare. So what we have here should work just fine. Let's give it a shot. Come back to Firefox, give it a refresh. And yeah, I once again get uh, all of the posts that have an ID greater than one. Let's remove that and try it again. And now we have all of the posts in the database, which is only two. Cool. Okay, so what we have here actually looks fairly good, but we have one issue right here. I don't love this, and here's why. What if I were instead trying to fetch a single post? Well, I might say, select star from posts where the ID equals one, and I will just die and dump that post. Well, it'll work if I come back and give it a refresh, but notice it's, it's effectively returning a collection, a list. So I have an array of arrays, which means I would have to do something like this. Give me the first item from that array, and that would give me this, and that too is an array. So I would then say, then give me the title, and that works. But notice it's, it's kind of weird. I would expect a single array that has all of the attributes of my post, but because we called fetch all, that's going to return to us a list. So the solution is to not call fetch all, but instead just fetch. Give me one record. Come back and refresh. Yeah, so now notice I have a single level array here and I can once again do things like post title and that'll work. Okay, so once again, we're seeing that whether we call fetch or fetch all or maybe something else, well, that needs to be dynamic. So instead, why don't we just return the statement itself and yeah, at least for now, I can be in charge down here of whether we call fetch or fetch all. So in this case, I want a single record so I could call fetch and then once again, PDO fetch association. And notice this right here is kind of annoying. It would be nice if we didn't have to, to manually write that every single time we fetch the results. And trust me, you can. We'll do that in the next video. So if I come back and refresh, there we go. And yeah, if we later decide, no, I actually wanted all of the posts, then I could switch over to fetch all. And, uh, oh yeah, of course we have to update this. Now I have all of the posts, which is an array of arrays. And sure enough, that works. All right, and I will wrap up this lesson by creating a new database.php file. And I will grab all of this here and move it. And we'll paste it right here. Okay, cool. So now if I switch back, we can require database.php, 
And actually notice that I made that D capital. And that's because whenever you have a PHP file that only contains a class, and you're gonna do this all the time in the future, by the way, again, uh, general conventions state that it should be capital. Okay, so granted, we still have so much more work to do, but already things are starting to look, and more importantly, feel pretty good, I think. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode and we'll keep chipping away at it.